Welcome. Today is the 26th day of Tammuz and the, is it 26th or 25th? I'm confused. It's 25th day of Tammuz and the 31st of July. And we're looking at the fourth reading of the two Parshot Matot and Masay connected together. And as always, the transition between the two Parashot is always in the fourth reading. So we're ending the parsha of Matot and continuing with Masay. And I want to focus on the beginning of Masay, um, although there was a way to continue what uh, we talked about yesterday, about the need to have prospects, about the need to um, have a future, to feel that a person has a future to maintain good mental health, and that the sign for that came from the uh, discussion between Moses and the tribe of uh, Reuben and Gad, but the beginning of Parshat Masay recounts all the journeys, all the separate journeys that the Israelites took in the wilderness. And the reason that they had so many separate journeys was really because um, we know that every time that the cloud would lift off of the tabernacle, they would move, and then when it rested again, it stopped, then they would rebuild the tabernacle where the cloud was. And altogether, Rashi tells us that in 38 years, they actually only made 20 journeys. But the total number of journeys from the time that they left Egypt until now that they're standing at the gates of the land of Canaan is 42. And there's a famous teaching that I am sure the last year when we studied this, I mentioned from the Baal Shem Tov himself that these 42 journeys correspond to the journey that every soul takes from when it descends into the body until when it returns to uh, the spiritual world to be part of God again. Um, it's very important to know, one of the questions a lot of people ask, is there any retention? Do we retain anything of these journeys when we return, when we leave the body? And the answer is yes, there is always an impression. It depends on how much the impression was spiritual during the person's life uh, in terms of how much is, is really retained. And there are some people who are so dedicated to helping others in this lifetime that they remain connected to this world. And those are the people that we call tzaddikim. Those are the people that we go to um, to pray to God over their grave. But there's also people who receive messages from these souls that continue to be connected to this world. Some of these messages are just because we learn in their teachings, but some of them are much more real-time messages that a person who has himself elevated to a high spiritual plane can actually hear and understand in some way and can then uh, uh, help, help others with it. But this is all connecting to something very basic, which is that these 42 journeys that every soul, every one of us goes through, in our generation, thanks to the work of Rav Ginsburg, nobody... I, don't, I, don't, I can't think of a single sage who would have done this except maybe Rabbi Meir in the time of the Talmud is the only one who counted things this way. But Rabbi Ginsburg found that there are exactly 42 usages of the root to love in the Pentateuch. And so he has this beautiful correspondence that these 42 journeys are really the 42 journeys of love. And they are both at an all-inclusive level of the entire world, and they're also relevant to each individual. So let's first of all talk about the individual before we get into them. And by the individual, what it means is that the journey of every soul is really to love in this world. And what does it mean to love? So there are people who understand the baser meaning of love. They love the material. They love the passing, fleeting, transient things. But they come to love. 
And you can't say that any life is meaningless because in the end, the way that we're built, the way that a human being is built, is, is, needs to fill himself or herself with things from outside because we're an open system. So we all have some kind of love even if we live the most basest, crudest of, li- of lives. There's still value in that because that, as it were, is what's missing from the spiritual world, this idea of love. Because in the spiritual world, nobody really needs anyone else. There's no real necessity to need. Everything is complete in and of itself. It's not missing anything. And so it's not really developing. But the moment a soul comes into this world, it immediately needs. It becomes needy. Now the question is, what are you going to do with your life? Are you going to continue to love and need only that which is base and crude and material? Or even those things which are bad? It could be bad just in the sense of health-wise. It could be, God forbid, that you crave things that are actually terrible and hurt others, which we see around us, unfortunately, a lot, uh, especially nowadays. Or are you going to elevate to a much higher level where what you love and what you crave is godliness? And to love and crave godliness is the real purpose of all these journeys. These journeys are really meant to help us develop our need, our understanding that what we're really looking for and what's the reason why we're not satisfied with the lower objects of love is because in the end what we crave is in the infinity of God. We're craving the infinite goodness of God. And that is the purpose of the soul's 42 journeys. Again, because this root appears 42 times, the root to love, Aleph, Hei, Bed, Ahav, appears 42 times, exactly 42 times in the Pentateuch. Now, this number 42 has tremendous meaning. It's 7 times 6. One of the most beautiful allusions to this that's related to love is that if I take the word love and I divide it into, it's made out of four letters, Aleph, Hei, Bet, Hei. If you've ever seen, there's this uh, sculpture in, in Jerusalem that has the word love um, as two, two uh, sets of two letters, Aleph, Hei, Bet, Hei. And what people probably don't know about the sculpture is that it, it alludes to love in more ways than one. I don't know if the person who made the sculpture even knew this. But the first two letters, Aleph, Hei, together they're equal to six. The second two letters, Bet and Hei, the third and fourth letters really, they equal seven. So when I divide it into Aleph, Hei, six times Bet, Hei, seven, I get 42. So Ava, again, love appears 42 times in the Pentateuch, and just taking the word itself and dividing it into two parts, which is also makes sense because when you, Ava by itself, just love by itself, uh, what are you loving? But here it's like the Aleph, Hei, the first two letters, love the last two letters, and when you multiply, you get 42, and that's the number of times that it appears in the Pentateuch. But we, we could go on and on. There's so many numerical allusions to this. Let's mention just one more. That if we take, if we look at 13, the value of love, the 13 is the seventh prime number. And the value, the sum of all the primes until 13, which is 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and 13 together is also... Um, 42. Now, I want, to, I want to take a look at where love starts. It's very important to see. So where does all this love really start from? And the first time that love is mentioned in the Pentateuch is in relation to Abraham when he goes to take Isaac to sacrifice him. And there it says, God commanded him Take your son, your only son, the one whom you love, Isaac. And so uh, Abraham is the first carrier of love. And that fits perfectly because Abraham is the man of loving kindness. He is the incarnation of love. In fact, 
There's a source called the Sefer Abahir that writes that all the time that Abraham was in the world, he was alive, he was functioning here in the world, the sphera of loving kindness, God's vessel of loving kindness, did not have to do anything. It was it was basically uh, it, it was it was workless. It didn't have any work because Abraham was filling the world with love himself, and all of Abraham's love is concentrated in his love to Isaac. And so that's very interesting that the original form of love is the love between a father and a son. But then Isaac takes this love and the second occurrence of love is Isaac takes Rivka into his mother's tent and she is his wife and he loves her and he is consoled after his mother. So that's the second type of love. The love that Isaac received from Abraham, he converted into his love for his wife. And then, interestingly, love is divided in two. Because the third occurrence in love, the third and fourth are in the same verse, and it says, that Isaac loved Esau, and Rivka, Rebekah, loved Jacob. So here we see the love was divided between their two children. So the love that Isaac had, he gave to Rebekah, and she transferred that to Jacob. And after that, Isaac took whatever, I guess, remained of his love for Rebecca, and he transferred that to Esau. Now, it's very interesting to keep following where love goes in the Pentateuch. It's a it's a journey in in and in and of itself. But let's just mention the final point. Again, we said that all these forms of love, in the end, they come to teach us love for God, because that is truly the full and complete representation of love in the soul. And the hint for that is that the value of 42, these 42 occurrences of love in the Pentateuch is equal to the holy name Eloka. It's Aleph Lamed Vav K. And this is the name that is always connected to the divine soul in man. That's why it's called a chelek eloka mimal mamash, a true part of God above. The divine soul is the epitome of God's love for the world, and it resides in us as the divine soul. And again, the name that's associated with that, the holy name is Eloka, Aleph Lamed Vav He, whose value is 42. And again, that's the number of times that love appears in the Pentateuch, I hope that someday we have a chance to study this whole unbelievable article that Rav Ginsburg wrote and truly trace the journeys of love through the Pentateuch. Thanks very much for joining today. I hope to see you tomorrow.